OK, so um, these are two references. Uh, one, first one for yesterday, the second one for today. I needed to make up something for tomorrow. Um, OK, so yesterday, I basically I gave a definition of everything. I'm trying to uh, give you uh, the good reason why we need to have a gross Zagier formula. Today, I will want to answer the question, why is it true? Why is it right? Yeah, I, um, so tomorrow, I, I will talk about what else should be right. So to answer the question, why is it right, we needed to, pr we needed to put um, this, all the different Gorzaghi formula, different levels, into a bigger package so that it has some group action and that. So I will talk about, um, uh, we'll, instead of working on a one modular curve, I will work on a towers a modular curve. So we the recall that we have, a, we, we have an E defined over Q. So this is a elliptic curve. So the gamma, the congruent subgroup, S2 of Z. So in fact, probably the more, if you think about a group action, probably the better to consider it congruent subgroup in SR2 of Q. Because this way, they, I mean, they, when you consider tower, there's a two, a same thing, no difference. But a group action for a second one will be easier to understand. So you have X gamma will be the upper plane with the cusp modular gamma. Then um, yesterday I said that for certain gamma, this the homomorphism of uh, L right zero here of X gamma of E is non-zero. So this is a big theorem. It's a combination of a theorem of Fortin's and the theorem of wires, Taylor, and others. So, um, so now I'm going to concede uh, the projective limit of gamma x gamma. Right? I mean, the, this certainly is not an algebraic variety. Well, it's still algebraic variety because uh, all the Map, at a junction map is a finite map, so you still can define it in a certain way. If you only consider C points, this actually has a very simple description. It's the projective limit of, um, of U. So I use the same uh, a delicate description as um, Kelvin's lecture yesterday. Will be U, it will be open compact subgroup of G02 of QH. Right. So this has action by of uh, this uh, GL2 of Q take an upper plane plus or minus take the GL2 of QH mod U. In fact, in this case, probably much simple is simply uh, H plus times, you know, um, modular G R two of Q times G R two of Q H as a set. Okay, so this is not a canonical, not a canonical equal to X plus, just X plus is itself. Times Z hat. So it's a very simple description. So this has action by GR2 Q hat, and this description is very easy to describe. So then uh, instead of consider this then, uh, we can see it formally the homomorphism from this X, the given name called this X. What? I 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. This one can sit as, um, <laughs> when I wrote yesterday, uh, this one, let me try to do that down. The x gamma can sit as a curve uh, of a q gamma. Then you further consider as, so I can see this curve as, x, as, as a q curve in a two step. First of all, this curve is a connected curve over uh, Q gamma, then you just uh, view it as a scheme of Q. So it depends on what I mean, the C points. Depends on what this notion means. This notion means I define this one as a Q. Okay, so I can see X gamma as a Q curve. And then you talk about C points. So in other words, when I define the C points, I already make, um, make the various different embedding to C. You need to choose the embedding to C in order to define the C points. Is that okay? Of course, I mean, the, this description already have a problem inside. So conjugation of Schumer varieties, it's still Schumer variety, right? So I did, this I didn't describe. But uh, for modular interpretation, that's a pretty normal thing. So I can see it, uh, this morphism of, uh, of E, and somehow I turn the Q here. I give a name called a pi E, which is a pi. So this is a direct limit of uh, the homomorphism of X gamma E turns the Q. So this pi e as a representation has action. By GR2 of Q head. I didn't define a Q head. Q head is a Q head is a completion of a Z head turns a Z over Q, right? The Z head is a product of Z P. Mod N Z. So, um, so you can consider pi e is a representation of GR2 QH. So, in fact, uh, this representation is irreducible. Um, is irreducible. And sometimes it's called admissible representation. Algebra is admissible. Of GR2 of Q head. That is usually we call that the, uh, I mean the, the finite part of a uh, Lagrange correspondence of Galois representation. But in this way, you define the representation in one step. You don't need to move to modular form. And not only that, you get a representation with a coefficient Q. So this pi E can be decomposed as a local representation P. This is a pi P, a irreducible representation of GR2 of QP. Okay, so this is a one step. Okay, so I forget to say what is action here is. I mean, action means if you have, well, first of all, I need to specify that this thing has action from uh, right hand side, because this is one acts on left hand side. This action is from right hand side. So the induced representation and the morphism will be from left hand side representation. So there, let me write the, the action will be if f is inside. Uh, pi and uh, G inside GR2 of Q hit. 
g f of x it really means f of g x x of g right or rat g here there's a rat action inside okay so this is a so I defined this representation the second thing uh, as I said I needed to the k this q squared of d is the imaginary quality of field then um, then I, I want to fix the embedding. from k to uh, in fact I, I, I this is the sufficient 2 by 2 of q h right so this will induce an action by k cross inside of um, gl2 q h And uh, somehow, and of course, I mean, this embedding will be embedding this one. And the K cross go this one. Then I can see this X of K cross. So this is the sub scheme of points. Fixed by uh, K cross. But right now it's pretty abstract. Let me give you something very concrete. So, but this one will be will have action by this will have action by uh, normalizer of K cross inside the GR2 of Q head. And this normalizer is, in fact is is a, is a group joined with generated by times j. j is some elements there to normalize the k. So gx equals x bar of j. So this is the scheme of a q with uh, the group action. The complex theory will tell you that uh, this also has a good action by a Galois group. Um, uh, Q bar of Q, right? So that's like a, it's a zero-dimensional scheme. Has a, as a Kevin said, has a two symmetry, Hecker symmetry and a Galois symmetry. But in fact, uh, both of them make this one to be a principal homogeneous space. Uh, to be, oh, sorry, both of them make them the transitive, a uh, commutative action. The same theory says that this action is given by uh, the reciprocity law. So action is given by uh, the Galois of KAB of Q that is morphic to uh, this normalizer. Of K cross. So, and these kind of points, we can um, we can um, interchange the action, heck action, and the Galois action. So, I give you some example. I mean, the example for example, you can you can if k equals q. Let me write some square of d. Then you can invent this one to be two by two matrix uh, of q. For example, A plus B squared of D goes to uh, A, A, uh, B, B, D, right? So that's like, uh, you can make this embedding. Uh, then, 
you can find out the k um, k cross x upper plane as a fixed point. The fixed point is very easy to calculate. It's just uh, a z plus b b d z plus a equals z, right? That's the point you want to find. You're trying to solve this equation. You find actually z equals 1 of square root of d is, in fact, the standard the fixed point. Right. This is actually the point used by uh, Hingen, uh, rather than the point used by Birch and Grossdagia. The Grossdagia used the modular interpretation. Hingen, uh, he didn't use the modular interpretation, he just take these points calculate the value using modular functions. Then you get the solution of diffining equation. So this is an alpha plane. Or maybe I have the negative depends. Um, yeah, negative is one. Right? Because Yeah, because D is negative. If you put a one of square root of d, you get it. The imaginary part of it will be. be negative. Okay, so so far, what have we done? Combine these both construction together. So if we if we fix, so if I fix a p here, so you get this point there. So then uh, this, so this upper plane goes to x of gamma, which is z here, I get a point z gamma, or p gamma, whatever, p gamma. And uh, then if you take the project limit, this will get a point p of p gamma there. This will be inside x. Using these points, we can define an um, embedding from a torus to the Shimura curve. So we define the, this is the torus inside x, right? By take a t goes to, well, uh, p to the sigma of t. The sigma, uh, if I use this thing, maybe this map, this is where we call the sigma, for example. So, so this is the, the Shimura curve. This is the, the Shimura points, right? Zero dimensional Shimura points. It is, uh, well, it is essentially spec QAB. No, okay. K A B. Inside. Okay, so now I reinterpret uh, the pure integral. Recall that we define the pure integral. The following, so if you give a p there, giving f inside is a pi, right? And then we can define, yesterday we defined the pure integral. I'm sorry, the chi is the character. To c cross is finite character. Then we define this one, chi, as the integration is there, right on the Galois KV of f p sigma, chi sigma, dt d sigma. 
then using this, uh, um, this reciprocity law, we can rewrite this one in a more fancy way, the integration of k cross h of k cross f of t chi of t dt. Right. So that's like a more familiar uh, Pierce integral in automorphic form theory. So you see, if you think about it, I mean, there's a pi. Let me write the one big remark. I will come back to these points later. So one should review. So one should the pi should be reviewed. The remark. you be considered as uh, the space automobile forms on uh, GR2 of QH with values in E. Right, so it's, it's not the uh, complex valid automorphic form, it's a elliptic curve valid automorphic forms. Right, so that's the way right, you have to think about it. So, so this pure integral is not a, a, a complex number, it's in E to AB turns to C. Okay. So that's the way you should think about it. This is very important because later on we will uh, we will redo the theory by replacing E, replacing E by a complex number. That supposes have a simpler theory, right? So, but that theory was known. That's something called the vas puget formula, right? So this theory basically, they redo the vas puget formula by replacing complex numbers by elliptic curves. Okay, so there's two, uh, to continue, there are the two observations which uh, give you, uh, which is a very key thing, key observations for, um, for the Kurosagia formula. So one observation one is that, well, you see, if I fix the chi, I mean this one is, uh, is a functional, right? F is a functional. So F goes to P, F chi, so it's a functional, it's a linear functional. In the space, home of a pi, Tends to chi, chi is one dimension, it doesn't really matter, but I'll put it there. I have a good reason to put it there. With the value in E, right, of KAB, tends to C, right? But in fact, I can take it as a second one away, just over C, then tends to, um, tends to E of KAB. And this linear function of the way to write on it is the integration of the k cross of k. So in other words, the linear function of is trivial when you restrict on this group. Right? So this is a representation. This is a representation of GR2 of QH. This is a representation of k cross. Right? So I have a diagonal action on this end that are k head cross. Right? So this is a linear function, though. If you let f change, yeah, you define the integration. F is there, right? This is this is integration there. Integration means the take average, right? What? F is the, is the choice even in dimensional space.
modularity says at least one. Then you can use GL to QH to, to take many. Once you have one, then you have many, right? Yeah, so it means that your reducible representation of GR2 Q head. That's is that exactly. Yeah, I mean, okay, so probably you want you want to think about what's the connection with the new forms, right? New form means that you don't really can you 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 new forms means that this representation, you take certain uh, invariants, gamma not of n, right? In my case it's called u not of n, the same thing. This dimension is the one. Right. So that's the, the generator of this form is the new form we usually talk. Right. Okay, but the You see, but there's something bothers, right? This thing is very big. You say, I get a linear function of this one. This space has nothing to do with, auto, with, with, with the rational points, arithmetic, but this thing has something to do with arithmetic. So the way to get rid of that one, we use uh, the narrow tetrahedral pairing, E, K, A, B, E, K, A, B, go to the, uh, the real number, we have a, Narrow tate height pairing. Okay, so we use narrow height pairing. So, so that's a good place why we take a two periods instead of one period. So this means that if I have uh, two periods, P F um, one chi one chi, I can take narrow tate height pairing P F two chi inverse. I will tell you why I take chi inverse later on. I can take a narrow tight height pairing of this n. And uh, uh, usually when, when people do narrow tight height pairing, we use a Hermitian pairing. So the linear in the first one, anti-linear in the second one. But for our purpose, I will take a bilinear. So I didn't take a conjugation. If we want a Hermitian pairing, then I have to write this one, the bar, take this all away. But this is just a bilinear. I just, this is a bilinear, by C linear on EKB tensor C. So in the second one, I still take a linear, not an anti-linear. If I do this one, then this will be, um, if you think about it, F1, F2 goes to this part as a linear functional. So this one is inside C, you get a C valued. So this defines uh, a linear functional, a numerical linear functional in this space. So this gives uh, a pairing on a linear functional, an element. I give a name called a beta inside the home of pi tensor chi of C tensor home pi tensor chi inverse of C. Both of them is the invariant k head cross. Right, I get a linear function there. That's very interesting. So, so far there's a elliptic curve suddenly completely disappear. It's just have two representation. It define a pair in there. Right, right. There's, there's completely no arithmetic here. Right. This is a one-dimensional. One uh, this is your disciple representation of GR2 QH. Right. So there's nothing to do with the elliptic curve. Okay, this is the first observation. So the first observation is that when you do this PRS integral, take a narrow tetrahedral height pairing, you actually get a bilinear, uh, get a, a, a bilinear functional. Okay, in this space. Well, unless we can do something with this space. Um, I mean, the, the second one is 
it's a very interesting that this space is happened to be very small space. So the observation two, I, sh I should not call it observation, it's really a bigger theorem, is by, uh, the first one is completely trivial, I don't know what's the name of that. The second one, the Saito, Tano, Navas Puget, And uh, but you have the second part. There are two parts. First part is this space actually has dimension at most one. So it's a very tiny space. So this is at most dimension one, is at most dimension one tensor product <laughs> at most dimension one. So we so far define a, a one element in the one dimension, at most one dimension space. So not only that, this one of course is the tensor product of the local one of pi p to the chi p of c. So actually each of them is at most, at the most dimension one and most of them is dimension one. And uh, so this one, this local space is, has dimension equals one if and only if. So there's something called epsilon factor of pi p, chi p equals one. So this is the epsilon factor of the Rankin error series I write at the beginning local root number. Okay, so, so the conclusion will be the following. Conclusion will be, so the consequence will be the, the following. Dimension home, k cross pi tensor chi of c equals one if and only if, so this epsilon pi p, chi p equals one for all p less infinity. But, but you say I forgot about pi infinity. Usually your pi infinity, you take the trivial representation in this part. So this one, chi p is always equal to negative one. It's not a way to representation, it's a trivial representation. Now, I should not write this in, but it probably doesn't really matter here. So this is uh, somehow we should, uh, is a replacement, something called a Hingner's condition. You remember, the Hingner's condition x not of n, in some sense, you imply this condition. But if you say, I want to consider all towers of Shimura of a modular curve, you don't have something called the Hingner condition anymore, right? The Hingner condition say every prime p divided n should be split in k, right? So that's the condition we use all the time. But in fact, this should be the replacement of the Hingner condition if you, if you consider all the towers. Okay, so this is the first part. Second part, even amazing, is that, well, you say this is one dimensional, then can you give me uh, a base of this one dimensional space? So in automorphic form theory, usually it's very hard to get the, a base. Even you know the one dimension, it's very hard to get a, a precise base there. In the representation theory, you, when you start representation, you always combine the representation and it's dual representation. In this way, you can create some numbers, right? You get dual, you get some numbers. The second part is, um, it's interesting, so, so there is a base. So the space, um, so there, there is an explicit generator. Um, explicit generator. Uh, let me call it alpha p is inside. There turns a product to space.
is called a matrix coefficient. And this generates no matter, this is at most one dimensional. If a dimension is zero, this generates zero. Otherwise, this generates as always. Any case is given by the following an obvious formula. Is given by alpha p of f1, f2. Oh, I completely forgot about that. So you see, um, okay, this is uh, this is one more condition here. You're looking for this thing. This representation has trivial central character, right? I mean, for elliptic curve, the Galois representation, you know, it's a trivial central character. So. When this one restricted and a Q head across, this one uh, is non vanished if a chi here is a, is a, so the one necessary condition, so you need, I forget two conditions, this one and another condition that chi restricted on Q head across equals one. So this is something we call anti cyclotomic characters because that's necessary for this dimension. Because when you restrict the Q head across, this one give you is a scale, it's a trivial. Here, map to the here, you must have this condition. So this formula is given by the integration KP cross, QP cross. And uh, you have a kind of gradient. So remember there's a pi, tensor pi has uh, a pairing. I will define the pairing later. I mean, we know there is a pairing by uh, upfront nonsense, but actually you can find you can define this one by purely geometrically. The pairing basically defined by such as that f f is equal to degree of f. Uh, if f is uh, from x gamma to e, but be really careful. You have to normalize this gamma because uh, so it's defined by uh, if this one is by gamma here, then this one you have to take the volume of gamma, of x gamma, right? So that when you, when you change a different gamma, you will normalize this thing. So, so we have this a pi p of t of f1, f2, chi t, DT. Right. Okay, I can check with that. Maybe you feel very strange. Why that thing is uh, is invariant this one, also invariant this one, right? Uh, that's because of conjugation property, right? Well, you see, you see, if you alpha p, if I write uh, one S inside K head across, right? If I write S, F1, F2, if we bring this thing inside, what do you get? You get this integration pi T of T and S, S F1, F2, whatever. Let me, let me, let me forget about this pi here, ts, right? Chi t dt, then you change your variable t goes to ts inverse, right? Then you, this one you will get chi ts inverse, right? Okay, so this one you get a chi of s inverse out. You can take it out here. Right, so this gives you chi s inverse chi, I mean alpha p, f1, f2, right? So you move this to the other side, you get exactly this pairing, pi p turns to chi p here, okay? I mean, uh, similarly, uh, if you wanna see other direction, you notice that, uh, 
you can rewrite this formula by uh, this integration of pi p, pi. I mean, let me forget this in tf1, f2, chi t, dt. This will be, because the action is the conjugate is the uh, f1 t inverse f2 chi t dt, right? So this is the same thing as integration of f1 t f2 chi inverse of t dt. So that's give you the invariant of other action. So you have two actions there. Okay, good. So we define this uh, generate. It's not really, it's just the usual matrix coefficient. And then this matrix coefficient, you normalize a little bit. So, so normalize alpha p. Um, you write this one as some cp alpha p. I mean, such as that. Uh, we're not going to write down them, such as that the product is makes sense. So it defines the elements. I generate. Well, such as that, I mean, basically such as that alpha p, f1, f2 equals 1 if f i are spherical. Spherical base of these elements. So when you define that this, rest, this tensor product, you need to choose some base, right? So you want to. OK, so this will be a generator of these two space, the home of pi tensor chi of c to the home pi tensor chi inverse of c. OK, so, so I have a two. Observations. The first observation is I defined uh, a bilinear functional in a space. The second observation is this space is not very big; it's at most one dimensional. Not only that, we know there is a base there. It's a generate. I mean, uh, there. So there, the conclusion is that, I mean, if we combine both of them, you will see when this uh, generalized Hengen condition. Maybe I should call. Saturnal condition in this case, you will, um, let's call this a saturnal condition. Saturnal condition is a, is a sufficient and a necessary condition for this space to be one dimensional. So if we combine the two observations, we will have the following picture. We combine uh, observations, two observations of one and two. We give that so if uh, if the subtenor condition hold. then there is a constant C inside complex number such as that is a beta equals C times alpha. Okay. Maybe I took the product of alpha P, whatever. Right? Okay, so let's rewrite what does it mean. So if I write them up, so this is what we get. So the equivalently there exists a C inside complex number such as that for any F1, F2 inside of pi, then the Hingenon points that we defined E4 
if we take a known to the Hyperion, will be equal to C times this alpha normalized um, matrix coefficient of F1, F2. OK? So that's the, the before you do any, I mean, this everything right blackboard is completely formal. Before you do any calculation, you already end up with this conclusion. Right? So the gross aggregate formula, in some sense, is just trying to understand this complex, this constant C. Yeah, so everything in the blackboard is completely formal, nothing to do with arithmetic geometry. It's just automorphic form theory. Actually, I'm doing reverse Bourget. If we replace E by complex number, that's exactly reverse Bourget formula. But you're not using this result in the formula. I, uh, these, uh, I use a local result. These are local results. I mean, for example, there's a, there's a second part is due to reverse Bourget. So this local function has a generate. OK, so let me write down something if you want to remember. So in other words, maybe what, if you want one sentence, what the Kurosaki formula is about. So Kurosaki formula, so the Kurosaki formula. So it's a formula. Is that is there is about a decomposition a delic decomposition of a bilinear form and pi tensor pi. So that's what that we end up. Okay, now we want to write down the what the exact formula is. So in this generality, let me write and rewrite the Vazpirze theorem. So this is some uh, generalization. Okay. I mean, uh, maybe revise it as we did. So there. So first of all, the P f of chi, as a function of f, you fix the chi, let f change. This is not identically zero if and only if the derivative, if and only if have two parts, the first part, um, the first part, there's a side hoteno condition satisfied, so the home, pi tensor chi of C is not zero, or equivalently, this epsilon, pi P, chi P equals one for all P less than infinity, right? So the first part is, is a local condition. The second part, is the derivative of E chi 1 is not 0. Okay. So the both conditions satisfied, you get this, this pure integral is non-vanishing. When the pure integral non vanishing, then you have, so moreover, now you need to have a constant. The constant will be, so moreover, for any f1, f2 instead of pi, the pure integral I, 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 I computed, pf1 
pi p over 2 pi, right? Now into the Halley pairing. So remember, this is just the beta of f1, f2 equals, uh, this is a constant, is L prime of f chi 1, the times alpha f1, f2. So alpha f1, f2 is, you remember alpha, that's called sharp, right? Alpha sharp is normalized. You have really normalized it back. <laughs> so certain, certain normalization may be stuck here. It's, it's, it's a time constant. So this is the same. Something like that. Right, 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 right. So you normalize it, then you normalize it back. Real normalize. <laughs> so, so, so in other words, uh, the Kolsaki formula just said that the constant C there is nothing, just the derivative of error function. Yes. Or if you do that one, that would be more complicated. You have to <laughs> divide by LF chi 1. No, but yeah, but it's mostly kind of with the sort of the divergent normalization. That's right, that's right. Yeah, so, so yeah. I, is there a way to normalize it here from the constant of 1? No. Yes, because the, the local one is exactly the same as the raspberry one. Yeah, right. There's no, 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 no change. So what's actually said that actually you can, uh, this constant can be easily remembered because when you define this, bus, this matrix coefficient, when you normalize it, you get some number. Then you put this number back. Okay, as a few minutes, I will not going to continue, just tell you uh, this idea. You can, uh, just in GR2 case, tomorrow I'll talk something more general case. Just in theory, two case, what else you can do? Yeah, some extensions. So one remark is, if you replace this Schumacher curve, right? This one. I mean, this actually we, we write on the edge of a plan of zero two of AF by GR2 of Q, so that's essentially I write down there. If you write down, I mean, this, this thing's already of a GR2, or usual Adele's, right? Take this K infinity, right? Maybe take an R cross, whatever, of GR2. We'll put a K infinity because we, we are only working on Schumer curve. You replace by, by usual GR2 of A, of zero two of Q, and uh, E is just by complex number C, then uh, you can redo the whole theory in a, in a blackboard. Uh, then, of course, in this case, uh, the Pierce integral will be much simple. So you pick up any um, irreducible representation. So you, you, you have much a simple thing. You just think about all the functions. You have a pi, all the functions. The home, who knows what does it mean? Home of, of GR2, of Q, GR2 of A, of C here, right? The home just means functions. Suppose this is a reducible representation. I mean, you can. Then, uh, then you can define that the p f chi is a, is a complex number. Okay, just the complex number you get. Then uh, you can define. So instead of considering narrow tight height parent, you can have f one chi p f two chi inverse. You can get the same thing like that. In this case, you get exactly the same formula, except here you just have have this pi chi 1 times this normalized the matrix coefficient integration. So this is the Vasbury formula. So somehow the Kurosaki formula 
It's an elliptical version of a Fourier formula. Okay, this is my first remark. The second one I want to say is that there's some there's certain uh, different variations, extensions of the same. So there, so we have the following extensions, the following, the other, uh, there are other extensions. So I can write on there. So there is a. So the first thing is you can. This works for Shimura curve. Why would one need to work Shimura curve? Remember. There is a condition here, right? So this condition forces you can only work on the modular curve. Say this condition is broken. I don't have this. Uh, this one is not a one all the time. So if um, L e chi s has odd function equation. Then there exists a unique quaternion algebra. B, right, and the, uh, such as that, and, 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 and also a corresponding Shimura curve, such as that. So this, this, this cytotenor condition is satisfied. Such as that, this is home of pi Jacob Lagrange's correspondence to the chi of C is not zero. Okay. So then you can have the Gorozaki formula. Then we have this P of chi not identical zero if and only if. The derivative f, I mean the e chi one is not zero, right? So this is the formula proved uh, in a in a book, and the reference I said the second book. Yeah, Xi Yuan, Wei Zhan, and myself. The second one, you have a periodic. And Gorzaki formula. And the classical setting is done by Perrin Rio and uh, Kobayashi, whatever. And this generality is, is done probably in, in progress by Tisagini. So here you just replace um, replace Nernter Hyperion by periodic Nernter Hyperion. So the error function will be some some periodic error function. So the the, the last one I like to call the periodic. Bus Fugier formula. Or uh, BDP formula. So here, the narrated Hyperion, so this is a complex number, is replaced by, is replaced by uh, log, the formal log of P F chi uh, times F1 log F2 chi inverse. Okay, so let me write down. This have x of Cp map to E of Cp by F, right? Here you take a formal log to Cp by pick some differential form. Okay. So this will be a uh, bilinear form, the value in Cp. Right. So you can also get a formula like that. This is a 
This is done initiated by Bertolini, Damon, Masana. And uh, in this generality is done by, by Liu and Wei Zhan. And I have something there. So, but if you think about this thing, it's very interesting. You have a four formulas, the two, two vice Bria formula, two Kurosaki formula. So, so it's really, you have two coordinates, the periodic word, complex word. The one called second coordinate is uh, you want a special value or derivative, derivative. So all the combination of the four formulas. And the girls asked me, does it have idyllic formula to combine everything? That's I. I don't know. Maybe some more typical version of this kind of thing like that. Okay, maybe I should stop here.